The message you're about to listen to is brought to you by the Enthronement Assembly, a church with the mandate to activate and actualize God's royalty in you. Tighten your seatbelt, get ready for a ride as God's servant brings you the word that will transform your life forever. And now, the ministry of the senior pastor, Enthronement Assembly, Reverend Deji Olabode. Joshua chapter 11 and verse 15. You're welcome to church this morning. Joshua 11 and verse 15. Joshua chapter 11, verse 15. As the Lord commanded Moses' his servant, let's read together. So did Moses command Joshua. So did Joshua. He left nothing undone of all that the Lord commanded Moses. So Joshua took all the land. Somebody say, I take it. He took the hills. He took all the south country. He took all the land of Goshen and the valley and the plain and the mountains of Israel and the valley of the same even from the Mount Halak that goes up to Seir unto Baal Gad in the valley of Lebanon under Mount Hammon all their kings he took and smote them and slew them and Joshua made war a long time with all those things. May the Lord bless the reading of his word. I want to speak briefly this morning on how to take the land. How to take the land. If you want a better title, you, a more touch title, you could title it The Execution Generation. The Execution Generation generation now father i'm asking that you would help me not to waste the time of these people what needs to be heard let it be said and let it come with precision with power with accuracy yet let it be practical i'm asking oh god that by this word you will bring our entire leadership into alignment in the name of the lord jesus i'm asking that they will begin to see signs in their lives, wonders in their lives, and that everyone on the sound of my voice will take the land. To this end, grant me utterance, grant them entrance, and we give you thanks and praise in Jesus' precious name. Amen. All right, so uh, this week, as early as this week, God arrested me um, Sunday into uh, Monday night. A Monday morning and told me to go and get a book. The title of the book is Execution by Larry Bossidy. Execution Ram Charan. And as I was reading that book, you know, God can direct you to something. You know, God won't read for you. Some things that God, like that angel told him, put on your clothes, do this. If you don't do it, you are the one. God won't brush your teeth for you. And a lot of us are so spiritual that we expect God to do things that are practical. God will not. One of the messages I'm going to preach uh, uh, soon is agonize and organize. Agonize and organize. God is both spiritual and practical. So he sent me to read that book. And then in the course of that week, he showed me the missing link in our lives for the taking of the land. Now, many of us know that God has a land for you. And the land could be in, a, in an industry, it could be uh, it could be a marriage, it could be a ministry. It could be a career. Your land is basically 
whatever God has promised you, whatever God has said to you, that's your land. Whatever God pro promised to you, that's your land. But he showed me here in John chapter 11 that the difference between those who actually possess the land and those who don't possess it is execution. Someone say execution. So I shared this with our senior ministers in the course of the week. And then when I was praying, God said, what you shared with them belongs to the entire church. What you shared with them belongs to the entire church. That we don't possess the land by accident. Possessing the land is a consequence. Are you getting what I'm saying? Hence, in that scripture, if all you are doing is you're just waiting, I'm, I can guarantee you, <laughs> nothing will happen. In fact, things will get from, go from bad to worse. So he took me to the scripture in Joshua 11, and we talk a lot about the Joshua generation, but he showed me here that the Joshua generation actually is the execution generation. So he said, in Joshua 11 verse 15, the consequence, the end was so Joshua took the land. But he didn't just take the land. He, he, there was a sequence of activities there. And that's what I want to bring to your understanding this morning. Now the Bible said, as the Lord commanded Moses his servant, so did Moses command Joshua. So Joshua did. So Joshua took the land. So there is a sequence. First is to realize that if you will possess the land, you must get used to the chain of command. The chain of command. You must get used. There's a chain of command. There's a chain of command. If you're going to possess the land, you must get, look, you must get used to commandments. Someone say commandments. Now, commandment is something that this generation does not like. We all want to do things the way we want. We want to act the way we want. We want to dress the way we want. We want to arrive when we want. We want to just sit where we like. And if you are that kind of person, God is not the author of confusion. God is a God of order. God is a God of structure. God is a God of process. God is a God of sequence. So we see here that there was a chain of command. It went from God to Moses, from Moses to Joshua. Then Joshua did all, so Joshua possessed the land. Are you getting what I'm saying? Which means you will not possess nothing if you don't get used to the chain of command. You won't, you, I mean, you'll just be, you'll be in church if you don't get used to the chain of command that there is a flow of command. Now notice, the Bible said, as the Lord commanded Moses, so Moses commanded Joshua. He didn't convert the commandment to a suggestion because he wanted Joshua to feel good. As the Lord commanded Moses, so Moses commanded Joshua, so did Joshua, so Joshua possessed the land. You see the order? So God showed me and said, really, our land got lost in execution as we have our land got lost that if you are not in that chain of command you are not going to possess nothing nothing you're just going to be there having value now notice it didn't say as the Lord commanded Moses Moses argued Moses debated your opinions are not relevant when a commandment is being given and we must get used to this. I saw in scripture, it says these things, Paul was speaking to Solomon, he said these things command and teach. These things command and teach. 
So there is a teaching stream in the body of Christ, but there is also a commandment stream. Commandment is do this, it is done. Once you are that kind of person, you are going to get a lot of things done. You are going to see God move. Someone now said, but can't I use my mind? Not in this place. Are you getting what I'm saying? So as I was studying on Sunday, last week, I harped on when God called Noah and he said to Noah, Noah, I want you to build me an ark. In Genesis, let me explain this. Many of us have missed it. Many of us have missed it. And if we've missed it, we have to find it. In Genesis chapter 6, verse 14, he says, God spoke to Noah, you have found grace. Yes, you found grace. I agree. But this is now what you must do for your family to be saved. Listen. Make thee an ark of gopher wood, not of bamboo, specifically of gopher wood. Look at God. He said, rooms shall you make in the ark. Are you reading it? So it shouldn't just be a broad ark. The ark must have departments. For then you shall pitch it within and without with pitch, not with pot mortar. Many of you that think that God is not in the details, you are missing it. As far back as Noah, before the Holy Ghost was given, God was into the details. God was into the details. He says you will double it with pitch within and you will do it what? Keep reading. He says now this is the fashion which you will make it of. The length shall be 300 cubits, not 301. The breadth of it shall be 50 cubits, not 55. And the height of it, 30 cubits, not 20. A window will you make, listen to me, for the ark in a cubit that you will finish the window above. Let me explain what that means. You can't be in the ark and be looking around. You are only permitted to look up. So the window in the ark is not here. That's why many of you, you've missed because you're looking everywhere. He says there will be a window, but I want the window to open only upward. Not sideways, not to my friends, not to the church next there, not upwards. The only way, the, the only window, he had one window as big as what, and the window was facing up. In a cubit shall you make it, finish it above, the door of the ark shall you set in the side, not the window. If you go and say, okay, well, because normally architectural right, window is supposed to be on God, now in my own window, I want it on top. Let the door be by the side. And he said, thou shalt set it in the side thereof, and then it will have read this thing, lower stories, second and third stories. So he gave it specifically that this building you are building, it will have stories. There will be story, first floor, there will be second floor, there will be third floor. And behold, I, even I, am bringing a flood of waters upon the earth to destroy all flesh. Wherein is the breath of life from under heaven? Everything that is under the earth shall die. Look at verse 18. In verse 18, it says, But with you I will establish my covenant. And listen to me. So, God is a God of patterns, specifications, and dimensions. God is a God of what? Patterns specifications and dimensions. 
Which means you can't sit down here and say, why do they say we should come by 7 o'clock? You're already missing it. You're already missing it. Show me people who question commandments. I will show you people who will never get to their land. Many. Well, they won't get there. They won't get there. Until we understand that this is how God operates. Recently, there was a meeting amongst our ministers. Then I saw them. They said, the meeting is, uh, okay, if you are late, 15 minutes grace. There's nothing called 15 minutes of grace. It is either when are we to arrive, we arrive there. That is how people miss their time of visitation. Until we begin to wake up and say, okay, what did he say we should do? And do it. We may not take the land. So for the 7 a.m. people, I don't want you to just play God. He's, look, from this I found out, look, don't play with God. He knows what he told you to do. And except you do it like that, you won't see him. You won't see him. Now, let me now tell you why I was talking about in the land. So, show me some guy who does things anyhow. You won't get the land. You won't. If they come and say, sing for five minutes, you do six, you are out. We must become precision minded. We must become precision minded. So, he said, this was how Joshua took the land. God gave commandments to Moses. So the commandment to Moses was direct. The commandment to Joshua was indirect. Now, that means if you will take the land, you must know how to flow with indirect commandments and instructions. Many are saying if God, God will not speak to you. Why should he speak to you when you are still finding it difficult to obey your HOD? Why? That you are the only one that has an opinion. Why should he speak to you? Many claim they are hearing God, but he should long bore. Yeah. Satan. So he said, and anybody can claim to obey God, but then can you obey man? And until you have a degree in obeying man, you will never even have the privilege of obeying God. God won't bother you with instruction because God is saying, look here. Why should I tell you? The man, have you seen that scripture? That if you love the man, if you don't love the man that you can see, how can you claim to love a God you couldn't see? Which means in the eyes of God, alignment with the visible comes before alignment to the invisible. Once I see you, sir, there are a lot of things I see. We say, sit here, you are questioning. I can already tell your level. Once they say, sit here, say, I want to sit here. Stand, say, I want to sit. You can tell. They never go far in the things of God. They will never possess anything. This thing called, look, to take your land requires obedience to strict instructions. I gave a message out to my mentors, my sons recently, the ministers, called a life of advantage by my mentor, Pastor Kori Kumaya. He said many want the double portion, but they don't do it as a process. To get the double portion, you will follow. You will follow to Bethel. You will follow to Gilgal. You will flow from Gilgal. You will not, one of the last places you will get to hmm, is what he called in that place Jericho. He said, what is Jericho? He said, Jericho is a place of compliance with strict instructions so when they got to Jericho he said what you're going to do in Jericho is that watch this so we are all friends for seven days you will go around the ark that city you will go around it once every day if you go around it twice you have missed it you will go around it once every day for seven days and while you are going around it once, you will not mention anything to one another. Can you imagine that? Can, do you get what I'm saying? That is, they are going around. Just, you know, you read these things in scripture, but try it. How 
easy will it be? It's like God saying, you come to church today, you speak to no one. Many of us at the moment of our breakthrough was missed. Just in the way I mean, just in inside, just in outside, all kinds of stuff. And then he said, on the seventh day, you will now, you will not talk, you will shout. And if you shout, the walls will crumble. Look, they obeyed it specifically and God did what he was called to do. Let me tell you the truth. It is not, God is not limited in his ability to make things come to pass. But we have limited him because we are not executors of his counsel. That's why God said, if the people around me will not be in compliance, I will go and look for people. I will bring the men and the women that will execute God's counsel for me from a far country. What hurts me the most about Christianity sometimes uh, is sometimes the people are far who understand execution will do better than the people under you who don't understand execution. So let's go there and look at what God did. Oh, strict compliance. The wear tie, you wear it. Wear native, you wear it. Skirt should be at this level, you wear it. Sing this, you sing it. Sit down, you sit. Stand, you stand. Pray, you pray. Lift up your hands, you lift up your hands. Lay your hands on your head. You lay. Are you a zombie? He says, yes. If you want to possess the land, you can't do it your own way. I have the land. I'm not going to have the land, have you? Uh-huh. So you must do it my way to get my land. This is why many don't get, they don't have, they don't have too much in the body of Christ. Let me give you some examples. Recently, I wanted to... Sometimes you don't know what God has done. I, I, I felt that I needed health insurance, or what you guys call health... Is it HMO? So one of my bank accounts, they gave me the option of, an, of a HMO. So I said, well, go back. It's about an HMO. So I got the HMO, and then I obeyed everything. I filled everything, filled every form, till it got to the point of... It got to the point of... Choose a hospital... So when I got to the point of choosing the hospital, it dawned on me that being in Lagos for five years, I don't know any hospital. Then I went to my wife. I said, do you know any hospital? She doesn't know any hospital. Then I started looking for people around. Who can know hospital? Then it dawned on me. I was in a place called Igua going when God said to me, son, if you pray one hour every day over the health of your family, you will never have to worry about it. And I have kept my part and God is too faithful. And you can trace that not knowing a hospital to that compliance to that instruction. Are you just playing church or are you in alignment? So I told God, I, want, I love things I want to preach. He said, son, God said to me, son, bring the house into alignment. They are missing things. They are missing. Let me tell you, when God has a big plan for you, he will look for a soul, place him over you, and watch how you comply. And the more you struggle with the authority of soul, you will never see your land. He will bring you under somebody that you have the anointing. He is the ex-anointed. Yet, you will be there for 17 years. Yes. Strict compliance. He said, look, he said, did you see in First Samuel chapter 18? He said, David went, went wherever Saul sent him. Wherever. If not, nobody comes into a place of authority without adhering to these things. So let me explain what makes you do what you like. The devil The one that wants to ensure that you are you have activity without possession. Activity, 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 activity without possession. Activity. You are into so many things. This one you are there. That one you are there. This one you are there. Jake is around. You are there. Olumba is around. You are there. Tibi Joshua, you are there. 
from place to place to place. When God had opened the window ahead of you, which means God, look here, look up. Stop looking around, look up here. The window is up. The instructions won't come from the sun. It will come from the top. Look up. Forget about the side. Let me tell you how you miss it. Start listening to your peers. Yeah, is there, are they your Moses? No, no, no. Let's move on a little bit. So, so we see some issues now. So to possess the land, if he said there are three souls there, the first soul is the first that there was us, so, so, so. The first us dealt with God and Moses. You were not there. So God and Moses, God said to Moses, this is my commandment. God's relationship to Moses was an ass. Is that not so? But when he turns around to Joshua, it's a so. Are you there? So he commanded Joshua. Then Joshua did it. Joshua did it. Then so Joshua now possessed the land. Let me joke, all of you struggling with your heads of departments, struggling with your ministers, your journey is still far. Far! There are things God is dealing with in you. The easier you flow with him, the earlier you arrive. There are arrogance, there are stubbornness, there are pride, self-will. Things in you that are let me say, you can change location, God will still finger that thing. You can change department, he will finger it. You can change church, he will finger it. Finger it. He will finger the same thing. You will be shocked that the same thing you run away from is the same thing that somebody else will be highlighting there. Because it's God that is dealing with you, not man. So he did to me. Do you think we got here by doing what seems right to us? That's what the Bible calls anarchy. In the book of Judges, every man did what was right in his own eyes. That's anarchy. Satan is king over them. Go to Joshua chapter 2 verse, John chapter 2 verse 5. Let me show you something here. You see this sequence again. It's why many lack, they are full of activity, no miracle. <laughs> Hiya. For instance, God will, give, God will give you the pattern of how finances should be ordered. You can't judge that and this. You can't be using. F- are you getting okay? This is the lineage he explains. His mother said, They have no wine. Look at verse 4 of that scripture. I'm asking you today, what do you lack? Go very quickly. Jesus said to her, woman, okay, go back to verse, verse 3. So the Bible said, quickly please, verse 3. And when they wanted wine, the mother said to him, they have no wine. Let me ask you a question. What do you lack today? What do you lack today? Husband? Wife? Money? What don't you have? Listen to how to get it. The woman went to Jesus Christ. They have no wine. Look at verse 3 of that scripture. When they wanted wine, the mother went, so they have no wine. Look at verse 4. Who's walking with me? Then when they got to verse 4, Jesus said, woman, what have I to do with you? My hour is not yet come. Look at verse 5. Jesus didn't answer him. Why? Because Jesus also understood compliance. That more gone my my own sorrow, you know. So, and she too understood that Jesus understood compliance. So she didn't argue with Christ that uh, they have no wine. Then she moved to the next level. Whatever it tells you to do, do it. Are you seeing it? It's deep. He knows that by virtue of covenant, Jesus must do it. Even Jesus must do it. Now, what, then she said, whatsoever he said to you, do it. Look at verse 6. 
Verse 6, where are you? Verse 6, is it working? Have I done 5? So they were set there, do it. Remember that thing, that's the key to everything you want. Just do it. Look at verse 6. They were set there, six water pots of stone. After the man of the refining of Jews, listen carefully, containing two or three fragments apiece. Verse 7. And Jesus said unto them, Fill the water pots with water. He didn't say drop water inside. He didn't say put water inside. He said fill it. Look at what they did. And they filled them what? To the brim. Let me put it to you. If they had filled it halfway, nothing would have happened. That's how many are just there. Nothing is happening for them. We don't understand execution. So they filled it to the brim. Instruction one. Number two. Keep moving. Verse eight. He now said, draw out now. Bear to the governor of the feast. And they did it. Verse seven of that scripture. Look at what happened. When the ruler of the feast tasted it somewhere between their execution and compliance and the person tasting it. Look at what happened there. You ate now. What are you doing there? Put the most, um, don't get me upset this morning, please. Put the most effective person there. He said, draw out now and bear to the governor of, and they bear it. Look at verse 9. The moment. When the ruler tasted the water that was made wine, he didn't know where it was from. But the servants will give the water new. And the governor of his called the bridegroom and said, ah, Look at verse 10. I, I know I'll just go use my Bible. Now, let me also explain to you that is how not to have a relationship with me. Once you don't understand compliance, I start giving you distance. Once you don't understand compliance, I start looking. Look! I say things like, for instance, I can tell you things like, for instance, I told the guy who drives me here, I said, I'm coming to church by 5 a.m. And I'll be looking at the time. One of the ways you know a person that is serious is compliance with instruction. Not debating it. Compliance. Compliance. And it is what many people look at. I told you of the day when my mother gave me time and she was looking at me as I finished preaching, she said, we're just increasing the time for you. We're increasing it. He said, but I still saw that you left 30 seconds. Can you imagine that? They were, that which means they were testing me to see if this guy understands compliance. Many of you have talent, but you don't understand compliance. You don't understand execution. So your talent will not go anywhere until something... Let me explain something. Let me share this. Many in church, the number one thing hindering many people in church, can I share with you? Brokenness. Many are beautiful, but they're not broken. Many are talented, but they're not broken. Many have core, but they're not broken. Not broken. And God performed the miracle. Whatsoever he said to you, do, do it. Now, so we're seeing here that execution matters. Now, now, if you don't know your Moses, you already have a problem. If you now don't know your Joshua, you already have a problem. Because the chain of command will flow from your Moses to your Joshua to you. Now, the question is this, who is your Moses? Who is your Moses? Two, who is your Joshua? Three, now, Go back to my source text in Joshua 11, verse 15. Look at how he, this guy took the land. He says, so, read it, everybody. The Lord commanded Moses his servant, so did Moses command Joshua. Now, let me also explain that. Some of you, if I can offend you, you can't carry my grace. You can't. You can't. You know, many people want you to convert God's commandment to a suggestion. Look at what now happened. Two things here. 
so did Joshua. Don't say so did Joshua. Say it again. So did Joshua. So did Joshua. So commandment, commandment, execution. So did Joshua. But what now shook me the most, read that next line. He left nothing undone. Go back. He left nothing undone of all the commandments that the Lord gave to Moses. Stop there. Which means to possess the land, you must be a student of the commandments he gave me. Which also means if you do not listen with intensity and keenness to your Moses or your Joshua, you can never get the land. You are listening to him. That's why let me share this. God will not put you under two people. Let me explain where many of your graces are hanging. You don't know what is primary from what is secondary. And if a person doesn't know what is primary from what is secondary, you will keep misbehaving. And they'll be looking at you like this. And let me share some depth with you. The things you need to be told the most are not easy to tell you. Is why you have to be sensitive to your Joshua. Let me train the protocol of our church. Two things, if you can stand up, please. Once a protocol officer has been given a principal, if he's been given that principal for 24 hours, his eyes must not leave that principal. He can look, he can look at his phone. His eyes are on that his principal. If the guy sneezes, he picks it. If the he, he's, he's not look, he's hearing the word with his ears, but his eyes are. Did you see that scripture that said, if you see me when I'm caught up, it shall be yours. But if you don't see me, it shall not be yours. So many are in church. That area of focus is also important. There are a lot of things. I think I need to find some time to come train your guys. You are, look, you are not confused. You are not carried away. You are in the service, but your eyes are on your principle. His slightest reflex, you pick it. And you can act on it. Yes, it works. That's how it works. Do you know, I've told you this before, that it is moments that make the difference. You can have one hour of service. It may be a 30 second moment that will make For instance, when Pastor Matthew came, all the thing he said was not for me. But there was a moment there when he said, I don't just give my brother out anyhow. Then he released it. And said, that means what is mine? Oh, that's it. If I attended that service and I missed that moment, I didn't attend that service. That is what happens in many cases. People miss their moment. Jumping from, jumping from place to place. So, you also have to ask yourself, who is my Moses? Who is my Joshua? And listen to me. Moses will not bypass Joshua. He won't. He will give what he has for you to Joshua. You go and get it from him. Which means, if you are too proud to take it from Joshua, you have missed it. There are delegates.
Number four, he now said, he left nothing undone. That is where I'm going. Not of all that the Lord commanded him. Of all that the Lord commanded Joshua. It explains to me why God would have said, watch this, why God would have said, look, set a man. There is a man here. His name is what? Joshua. In him is the spirit. Which spirit? The spirit of compliance. Put it on him. What I have noticed, man and woman of God, is mommy, it is easier for people outside to comply than for people inside. The spirit of compliance. He says, that guy, watch him. Were you there in many cases where they said, concerning Joshua, after Moses would have left, it would be Joshua who would be around to mop everything that had been done. He never was in a hurry to go anywhere. The man, Joshua, you can even ask Joshua, was always behind. Making sh- oh. May God have mercy on us. May God have mercy on us. So, of all that the Lord commanded Moses, he says he left nothing undone. He left nothing undone. So, I've been t- t- training our leaders right now that execution is the key to the next level. It's not policy. It's execution. Let me explain what happened. Many things God told us to tell them to do. How many of what Joshua told you to do are you doing? How many? Of all that Joshua told you to do are you doing? How many? Ask yourself. So if you are not doing it, why are you now complaining that you are not taking the land? Everybody must go back to the drawing board to find out what did God command Joshua for you that you are not yet doing. Everybody must go back to the drawing board. What did God call? Church is not joke. Church is a place of transformation. But before the transformation can be made a reality, there must be execution. Huh? Sometimes in a one hour message, it is one word. A recumbent one like this. And you hear it. And you know this is what my Joshua is doing. And you fall into alignment. You fall into alignment. Let me share some things. If you are rebellious, my grace will be far from you. Because I didn't carry it by rebellion. Two, if you are double-hearted, my grace will be far from you. I didn't carry it with a double heart. Are you getting what I'm saying here? Three, if you are into... Let me explain. You are into... Do you know that in all my life, I have never for once spoken negative of my authority figures in my life. Those that have followed me for years can testify. Not in a gist, not in any, in my life. So if you are that kind of person who speaks against the chain of command, my grace will be far from you. You will just be in the church, but the grace will be working for you. Number four, if you are the kind of person that it takes sponsoring your own agenda to be active, my grace will be far from you. Because the way we got here is by surrendering our agenda. That's how we got here. Let me explain. So let me just give you a few things. So someone said, but I'm not close to this person. I'm not close. Well, stop, stop wishing for closeness without compliance. Stop wishing for closeness. Let me explain what creates a distance between you and authority figures. Once you act in a way that they will never act, once you act in a way that they won't act, immediately they say disconnect. Do you get what I'm saying? Once you say what they will never say, immediately there will be a disconnect. Once you look, once you act in a way, let me now explain what brings about closeness. When you act in a way they act, they look at you and say, who is this guy? I saw a scripture about Jesus Christ that even closeness with Jesus Christ is not free. Can I show you a scripture? You don't mind? 
John chapter 15, verse 14. John 15, verse 14. John 15, 14. <laughs> you will possess your land. Read it, somebody. He said, you are what? My friends, if you do whatsoever I command you. Which means it is execution that determines intimacy. Yeah. You do what he tells you. It Look, immediately you and Jesus becomes closer. The same way you do what leader, leadership tells you, immediately you and leadership become closer. That boy, that boy got it. You be hearing, even mentors will be saying, that boy got it, that one missed it. Let me pray. When we say people got it, maybe you. Amen. Let me give you some depth here. If you claim to be aligned and you are struggling to get what the person you claim to be aligned with has, check your alignment. The essence of alignment is a flow. So if you claim to be aligned, but you don't have what the person has, check the alignment. And I'm at that realm now, mom, where I'm in firing mood. And understand something about me. Before I fire you, Umadumi, but there's just something about my life. Once I fired you, immediately my heart just. I don't just understand. Recently, we just fired one of our ministers. Like, totally terminated his appointment from this house. Before I could terminate it, my heart was dragging, dragging, dragging. Immediately, I terminated it. And there's nothing as dangerous as being amputated from a divine mission. And there are times you have no option than to do that. Now we're about to create a board. And let me move on to that. So execution and alignment. If they tell you to call, call. They tell you when to arrive, arrive. They tell you how to dress, dress like that. If they tell you where to sit, sit there. If they tell you to stand, stand. If they tell you to give, give what you have. God won't call you to give what you don't have. Are you getting what I'm saying here? If they tell you the length of your skirt, be there. If they want to tell you the tightness of the skirt, obey. Choir, are you listening to me? What I'm concerned about you guys and your choir, if there is strife, there will be no blessing. So, if I can't get this choir to be one, you are, I'm going to fire everybody. And, I, and, and just, just look for people that can get along. You know why we can't get along? Let me come. You know why we can't get along? Personal agenda. If it is divine agenda, it unites. But if it is, I want it like this, you want it like that, that's where we'll fight. If it's divine agenda, have they gone for Pastor Kumai? They've gone. What's the time we're supposed to pick up? 10 o'clock. Beautiful. So I want to say, after the service, what we're going to do after every service is we're going to create around departments and directorates what I call execution hubs. where nobody is going nowhere until they do what ought to be done. Do you get what I said here? If they took pictures in the service, the pictures must be done here before then anybody leaves. Are you getting what I'm saying? All this story of I will do it later is what is holding back the work. I will do it later. Be the kind of person that the moment God gives you an instruction, look, where is Sprenzy? Is Sprenzy here? Where is Sprenzy? Please stand up, Frenzy. On Monday, God gave me a book. Look, 
I was calling him that time, 5 a.m. or something, or 4 a.m., I can't remember. Because as I was praying, my throat to escape, God said, go and read that book. Immediately, I was calling him. Whether it is in the morning or not, that is when they are calling me that I must call you. Now, I explained to my ministers this week, I said, whenever God gives you an instruction, with that instruction is the inspiration to execute it. If you delay that instruction, the inspiration to execute it will lift. And listen, God's spirit will not always strive with man. Let me tell you what God does. In a service, he will be putting burden upon people. Burden upon people. Those that flow with the burden, he increases to go to the next level. Those that just delay, he will not strive with you forever. He will give you instructions. Do this, do that, do this. Be the kind of person that executes what God tells you to do. Don't even think. Because if you think, you won't do it. Whosoever stepped in, tests was made for Why am I preaching this? It sounds like it's hard. I want you to take your land. Do you know nothing is as powerful as when you see the manifestation of divine reality? Why are many of us doubting God? We are doubting God, but we have not experienced Him. When you experience Him, you can't doubt Him. But before you can experience Him, whatever He tells you to do, you have to do it. And He's not likely to come to you in the beginning directly. He will come to you through a chain of command. And your responsibility is to comply. Give me Exodus chapter 18. I saw something very powerful here. In Exodus 18. Exodus 18. When I saw this thing, it shook me. I mean, people hear you and don't do it. For instance, now, some of you have heard forever that the first voice I hear is my pastor's voice. How many are doing it? Please, if we are joking, you will know now. You know why I'm not afraid for people to be close to us? When you are close to us, you, are, you confirm what they are, you see what they are doing. Nobody can be close to you and not see that. These guys are not just preaching it, they are living it. Ah. But people hear, 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 and don't do. And yet they are better than God didn't do. But you, God is just mimicking you, you didn't do. Why should you do? Always having objection, objection. Sometimes you must know how to sub- look, pack your field and put it in your pocket and flow with divine instruction. Let me show. I saw something in Exodus. Maybe that's my last scripture. Let me just stop here. Someone say execution. execution. Exodus eighteen twenty three. <laughs> Exodus eighteen twenty three. <laughs> now. Of course, the story of Jethro and that this is Moses. This guy had led two million people out of the land. Can you imagine? Two million. And he was counseling them every day, every day, every day. He says, Jethro, now what are you doing? You know what they're doing is terrible. Then Jethro gave him an instruction. Read it, somebody. If thou shalt do this thing and God command thee so, then you will be able to endure. And all these people will go to their place in peace. Somebody say amen. Look at verse 24 of that scripture. He says, so Moses hearkened to the voice of his father-in-law and did all that he said. Moses did all. After everything. Let me explain this to you. There are me- I thought this guy had spent 80 days in the presence of God. Let me tell you something. There are things that it is human ghosts that will tell you. Keep being deep. He, he was deep. Look, it's somebody that will tell you that by now you should have a wife. <laughs> Let me not even go in there. I don't go there. Look at that scripture. You are waiting for God. God. See, say, and he did all. My father-in-law, I miss. In fact, recently I was missing your dad, so that. So I'm going to go and go. He will open the Bible to this chapter, and then he will now give me advice. And I've seen it in my life. Can you be spoken to? Can you be reached? 
let me let me tell you the let me tell you the most sophisticated brand of rebellion. Should I share it with you? If you are submitted to me, you are not submitted though. You are not mad now. Am I your mate? No, I'm not your mate. If you are submitted to me, you are not submitted. More a billion times. So you don't on what ground? What should I tell you now that you say? Is it by age, anointing, wealth, or what? So that you are submitting to me, that's natural. You are not spiritual at all. It's just a logical response to a superior authority. Now let me explain when you are submitted. Please stand up, sir. When Mr. Obisheson, without knowing who he is, where he works, is your head of department, and everything he tells you to do, you comply, then you are submitted. Yeah, it has If it's me, forget it. If it's me, it's just eye service. Sometimes in the office there I'm praying, and then because I've not come up, you say, chakala, 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 chakala. Then once they see you, is it me that will reward you? Is it me that will bless you? Is it me that will ah, grow up? It is when sit down. Let me look for somebody else. Somebody from last will come. Somebody from last will come. You are from Lasso. It is when I make her your H O D, eh? And you are the, you are the, you are the. Come, no one go follow me. You are blessed. That hand I'm touching you is heavy, so you are blessed. This is a GT Bank manager. Then I take this GT Bank manager and I make him a member of her department, and she's the head, and he submits to her. That is when he's really submitted. Let me tell you the truth. God does it. Let me also explain some steps. Once you are the kind of person that negative, you can sit down, sir. That negative report flows from your direct authorities to your ultimate authorities. You won't go far. There are many decisions that will be taken about you where you will not be there to decide it. So you see anyone who has the ears of your ultimate authority. My time is up. Let me tell you what happened. Something happened recently. We had cases. First time has to be called. We are discovering for four weeks they have not been called. When I said, yeah, it's not a miracle. It's that people are not executing what they're supposed to execute. So I told them at the management meeting, I said, I'm not playing anymore. After the service was through my minister's meeting and all that, we break into department, first directorate hops. Then we break into department hops. Then we break. Then everybody there executes. If there are first timers to be called, they must be called in this church before you go. And you get what I'm saying here? If there are those absentees to be generated, they must be generated in this church before you go. If there are, there are souls to be you, 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 in the church, we will sit down there. I don't care where we live. Until we can bring this execution bias into our operation, nothing will be done. And I want to tell you something, you know, for you as a church, you know I'm a nice guy. A lot of you know I'm a nice guy. These ones know I'm not a nice guy. Don't try me. Just don't try me. I'm telling you, look, don't try, and don't be looking at your watch. Don't try me. Why am I saying this? Go back to the scripture I started with commanded Moses. Moses commanded Joshua. Read it somebody. So did Joshua. Joshua what? Left nothing undone of all that God commanded Moses. Look at verse 15. That's why I say, Enu Oshe, Enu Oshe, Ari Wokoni Son Shippo, Empty Barrel, Loman Bariwo, Ari Wokoni Son Shippo, Enu Oshe, so I didn't answer it. So kidney sonship, alignment, execution. So I should have sang it. Ari woshe, Ari woshe, Abi anu woshe. Alignment, ni sonship, empty barrel, lo man barrel. You can be I'm a son, I'm a son. Which son are you? Which son? The son of what? Chongo. Let that get serious. We are watching you. That get serious. One day, let me tell you the day you won my heart. The day she, 
You had not won my heart all the while. Oh, you were doing a lot of good things. You had not won my heart. Because before you can win this, my heart, because it has been broken many times. So to win it now, there are walls. The day he broke won my heart was one day he came to me and said, his director had gotten, had gotten given birth. He now came to me. The way he was talking about her, come sir, you come out. By height, he's taller. He's taller. He's taller. He now came to me, sir, in the office. He said, she just put to bed and I could not go there to see her. And it will be somehow if I start walking next week again without checking on her and the baby. Can you please release me, sir? To go. If you hear the reverence in his statement, you would have thought he was talking about his mother. That was the day my heart followed you. That, that was the day my heart followed you. That was the day. You are not crazy. You, you won't, it's not me. I mean, we are not mates. But then when I saw that, I said, watch out for that boy. Let me tell you, God doesn't bless attitude. The Lord man bless. The air in the action the spirit that inspired the action is what God blesses. So Joshua took all the land. Let me pray for you. All the land that God has for you in your life, may you take it. May you not fall short of it. Sing that song with me. Ari wo she, abi wani ya. Aben wo she, en wo she. Ari wo koni son she empty barrel I love you all God bless you The message you just listened to was brought to you by the Enthumment Assembly, a fast-growing network of churches with headquarters located in Ikeja, Lagos. We believe you've been greatly blessed and would we'll love to hear from you. For details and inquiries, please visit our website, enthumentassembly.org, or call 0814006974. You can also follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram using the handle at EnthumentNG. Enthroment Assembly, activating and actualizing God's royalty in you.